Oh, how you doing? How you doing? How's your mother? Yeah, take this. Take this. No, no, no. Take this. Actually, wait to cash that. Wait till next week to cash that. Actually, I'll take that back. Well, guys, it's that goddamned time of the week. Where we look at the news cycle. Ooh, what's going on in the news cycle, man? Hey, what's going on in the news? We go, hey, what's going on in the news? We look at the headlines. We read the heads on it. You know, that's us reading the headlines. And we see, you know, we see a headline. It catches our attention. What does that say? What does that headline say? It says, I never sucked any ding-dongs. Ooh. And every week or every other week, who gives a crap? We look at that beautiful news cycle through the mouth of madness. Oh, in the mouth of madness. Through the eyes and ears and brains of madness. The heads of madness, basically. And the bodies of madness. And I like to check it out because of the fact of that they are the ultimate alpha males. This idea that everything is defined by societal whim. Huh? What's totally crazy about this is they end up agreeing on the morality. Oh. This is how you know there are no actual alpha males in this conversation. Because if you end up agreeing on the morality, which is whatever floats your boat, then yeah. there are no actual alpha males in the conversation. Whatever floats your boat is not morality. It is amorality. <laughs> right. And amorality is a form of immorality. I would know as the ultimate alpha male. <laughs> for my alpha studios with all the shot keys in the background. Well, folks, Demi Lovato has been nuts for Who? a while now, but she has also... Who? Never heard of her. Sorry. ...skewed over into fully evil, and she did so this week. Oh, so, God. Um, well, now she has a surprise new single. It is titled Swine. And it was made specifically to promote abortion. Uh -huh. You got to promote abortion. She said, I created Swine to amplify the voices of those who advocate for choice and bodily autonomy. Okay. Oh, my God. Going to have to do the rest of the show from my fainting couch, I guess. <laughs> so uh, here is some of the music video for Swine by Demi Lovato. Oh, great. Let's check out this track. Whoa. Women, not men. I never sucked any ding dongs. I've been in bed with probably 300 women. Yeah, this is, it's, and, and of course she's she's standing <laughs> on a um, on like being she's gonna be burned at right. the stake. I'm the next Tony Fantano. I'll give this a light eight to a seven because when I was watching it, I was going like this. <laughs> okay, so we got Demi. What's what is Demi Lovato's big hit? She did Call Me Maybe. Yeah, she did Call Me Maybe, right? But uh, nothing uh, but nothing too surprising here. Demi Lovato made a pop song, a pro-choice pop song. Uh, nothing too surprising here, but then Ben Shapiro <laughs> starts breaking it down to check this out. Just to get this argument straight, she's swine unless you allow her to be absolutely promiscuous and kill the baby that is produced. Allow her? Okay. Right, so, so what makes her human is okay. actually the thing that makes her most animal. Okay, okay. Uh -oh. yeah, just, take, just to actually understand the perverse logic here. The perverse logic is uh -huh. that being human is not about elevating yourself and taking into yourself the level of divine holiness that morality represents. Okay. Including, you know, guarding the human baby inside you. Uh -huh. That's not holy. That makes you an animal. Oh. What makes you truly a human being is to act like a pig, <laughs> which is to say to run around in filth and garbage and then to externalize all of the consequences by killing the resulting product. I've been in bed with probably 300 women. I like women, not men. Oh, we get it. Yeah, sometimes I watch these Daily Wire videos and I'm like, you know, it's probably better that they do this, that they're doing this, because otherwise I, I think some of these guys, you know, Brad Pitt and Morgan Freeman might end up in their apartment looking through their, looking through their tons and tons of composition books. Okay, but anyway, political art is very hard to make. It's very hard to make. It's hard to make it good. You know what I mean? So the Demi Laval thing, you know, it's it's not for me. It's not for me. Well, actually, it is not for me because uh, I'm an old fossil. But you know what she's saying in the in the video is uh, you know majority position in the United States, which is that women should be able to have an abortion if they want. And then Ben Shapiro comes in and he goes, "You want to be able to go around in the mud." The mud and the filth. Which is to say, to run around in filth and garbage. You ought to be able to go around in the mud and the filth. It's basically the taxi driver monologue. All the animals come out at night. Where Robert De Niro is riding around with a thousand yard stare, uh, lunatic uh, look in his eyes. 
talking about how he's going to clean up the filth of New York City. <laughs> Again, maybe it's better that Ben Shapiro's doing this. Maybe there's better that there's an outlet for this kind of stuff. Yeah, you know I mean, yeah, you know I mean. Mm. You know what? They can have that idea for free. Actually, no, it's not for free. I will suck huge royalties out of this. But the Daily Wire, do a remake of tax scene for scene, see shot for shot remake of Taxi Driver, Ben Shapiro as Travis Bickle playing the Robert De Niro part. Are you talking to me? If you couldn't actually hear the lyrics there because it's very difficult because she's yeah, just couldn't. screaming them into camera. Right, because I'm, I'm too old to hear that kind of music. Okay, go ahead. It is, God forbid I want to suck whatever the F I want to. <laughs> God forbid I want to F whoever the F I want. <laughs> and if he comes, I guess I got to be a mother. F what I think. I don't know a thing. The government knows my body. Oh my God, I should turn all this into drops. You little... You little pervert, you. <laughs> just, uh, what What a... What a disgusting human being Demi Lovato has become. I mean, Whoa. honestly, I used to feel hey. bad. Hey, man, she could be listening, bro. Hey, take it back, dude. Okay, I've noticed that this is a recurring trope in conservative videos, which is like, oh, we're not allowed to call people fat anymore, I guess, is, is, is the theme. She chants the mantra of body positivity for all humans, uh -huh. not just the fat ones. Her songs, including Good As Hell and Truth Hurts, have resonated with millions of people as anthems of empowerment and self-acceptance. Ah, uh -huh. self-acceptance and empowerment. Now, here's... Here's the reality. Okay. If okay. you want a path to unsuccess, right. you should follow the pathway of empowerment and self-acceptance. <laughs> Great way to fail in life. Yeah, Empowerment, absolutely. Empowerment and self-acceptance okay. means that you say that uh -huh. you are fine just as you are. Right. No one, no one, saints should not be fine just as they are. Okay. The best people are people who are always striving to better themselves uh -huh. and to better the people around them. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. You got to love Ben Shapiro because, you know, he's a meritocrat. He's one of these, like, meritocracy guys, you know. Oh, the best. The best rise to the top when his content is the absolute laziest dog uh, you can find. Probably maybe ever made by humans. So he's reading an article in the Washington Post about Lizzo. You know, we've we've seen these articles, and I think most of us kind of get it. Like, we, it, it's honestly, we're sick of both sides of this argument. We get it. You know, but here we go. Lizzo is out to counter the judgment and shaming. She is public about what she eats. She's vegan. And how often she exercises. Lizzo posts her exercise routines. So she eats healthier probably than this little puke does. And she exercises regularly. She posts details of her routine to TikTok. Not to proselytize, but to show people how to love themselves. Lizzo got me. Lizzo, this is the person writing this article. Lizzo got me back in the gym. Seeing someone who looks like me, not ashamed, or hating her body while exercising, changed my entire perspective on fitness. So the whole, you know, the whole bit that he's doing here is, These pop stars are telling people to be unhealthy. And they're, they're forcing them to be unhealthy with their, with their things that they say. You read the article and it's like, it's the exact opposite. Okay, all of this brings us to the collapse of the institutions that were supposed to prevent this sort of thing. A Lizzo article in the Washington Post? Oh, okay, great, okay, go ahead. And also to the building up of institutions that support the destruction of, of decent measures. So I have okay. to say that- I, I trailed off a little bit there. I'm a non-Catholic, uh -huh. but I'm a member of Western civilization, which means that I have a pretty strong stake. <laughs> I'm a member of Western civilization. I'm a card-carrying member. In the papacy, uh -huh. the Pope, happens to have dominion over a billion people. Mm -hmm. What he says matters an awful lot. And yeah. Pope Francis has been doing an absolutely horrendous job, actually, actually of guarding the values <laughs> hey. that he is supposed to be guarding as the Pope. Well, apparently, according to Fortune magazine, Pope Francis praised artists on Friday as true visionaries who can see, dream, and invent, as he welcomed 200 artists, filmmakers, and writers into the Sistine Chapel to mark the 50th anniversary of... Ben Shapiro looks at the Pope and he says, Dead! Okay. He goes, Dead! And then he goes... Mm -hmm. Francis acknowledged that some in the crowd, there was Andres Serrano of piss Christ fame, sometimes use confrontation to make people think. But uh -huh. he said their aim was to find harmony and beauty. Uh -huh. You want to reveal reality also in its contradictions and in those things that it is more comfortable and convenient to keep hidden, Francis said. Like the biblical prophets, you confront things that at times are uncomfortable. That's you criticize today's false myths and new idols, its empty talks, the ploys of consumerism, the schemes of power. Okay. So that is presumably why you invite a person who literally put a crucifix in a jar of urine and called right. it art. Right, right, in 1987. And you guys have not stopped talking about it since.
So, mission accomplished by that artist. Yeah, conservatives have been mad about that for decades. <laughs> and it's got it's kind of a hard one. I would love to ask Ben Shapiro this because I know he's a debater. So, Ben Shapiro, please debate me on this, you son of a bitch. You know, some guy is an art thing put a crucifix in a jar of pee or something. Jar of pee? Jar of pee? And they're so, oh my god, they're so upset about this. They're like, this is an ultimate bad thing! But, um, didn't God invent pee? Didn't God invent, don't you think he's probably proud of it if he, inv if he invented all this crap? Jar of pee? You show, you show God's invention of pee, which he invented, you son of a bitch, some respect. You're disgracing him and me, cause we make pee pee. <laughs> Stop. Well, folks, when I critiqued Pound Town 2 the other day, I didn't expect that it would turn into a full-fledged battle, an online battle between me and uh, Nicki Minaj. But apparently... Yeah, she noticed me! <laughs> I'm still getting money. I don't know who I am. <laughs> Pound Town. But then, then there was a sequel called Pound Town 2, uh -huh. which is apparently too pound, too furious. Even more pound... You, you know, you have the money. Daily Wire is, makes millions of dollars. You have the money to hire writers, right? Write you some little jokey pies. Write me a joke. For, for those who, who don't actually know what the hell she was saying, okay. I'm not going to read you that part of the lyrics because yeah. um, I don't want to. Oh, great. But um, here is part of the lyrics that uh, she quote unquote sings. Okay, so we're going to try to make lightning strike twice here. What? How many views did he get on the... Uh, 3.2 million when he read the WAP lyrics. You know, that song, that song that Cardi, <laughs> that song that Cardi B did that was insulting Italian Americans. Okay, I don't think it's going to happen again, Ben, but let's, uh, let's try to manufacture another viral moment. Here we go. Scare quotes around singing. Uh-huh. Anyway, I'm out in Miami, ho. He like feet suck on this camel toe. <laughs> Eat the pound cake down. I'm waxed up, booty hole waxed down. <laughs> ah, the words of... Yeah, you, you did this video just for me. Thank you. I'm out in Miami, ho. <laughs> you are? Okay, well, good for you. Hope you're having fun. Booty hole waxed down. Uh, well, that's your body, so good for you. I'm out in Miami, ho. Yep, we get it. I do feel sorry for Benny Shapino sometimes. Even though he does have his... Booty hole waxed down. Where? I'm out in Miami, ho. Okay. You know, because that Cardi B song, when he's re reading that Cardi B song, I don't know if he knows why that went so viral. It's because people were like, oh, listen to this absolute goon. Listen to this ab absolute goober reading these sexual lyrics. Well, folks, the federal government and our media and our society at large have decided that it is very, very important that we promote fatness and stupidity and laziness. There is a fat. And where are you recording this? I'm out in Miami, ho. Fascinating piece out by Ryan Burge, who's a, study, who's a scholar on religion and marriage, over at his substack or his blog, right. graphsaboutreligion.com, in which he examines the fact that the kind of key identifiers of success in the world uh -huh. generally exist among the religious population in the United States, and they are declining among everybody else. Oh. And this is sort of a fascinating phenomenon to look at. There right. are a bunch of charts that he puts up to show this. So, for example, he puts up a chart showing that as education increases, mm -hmm. religious practice or religious belief also increases to a certain extent, which is sort of the reverse of what we've been told. Uh -huh. The more income you have, the more likely you are to attend church on a regular basis, which is precisely the reverse of what society tells you, what the media tell you. What the media tell you is that it's the most educated among us who never go to church, and it's the least educated among us who always go to church. And that actually so here's the thing. Take religion out of the mix for a second. Okay. The identifiers of su success in American life, uh -huh. married, kids, high income education. Those are now correlating extremely highly with religious practice. This right. is the point that- Right, in other words, pray and grow rich is what Ben Shapiro is saying here. This is from some guy's personal website. So again, I don't even know if he's representing this data correctly, but just let's just assume he is for Ben Shapiro's sake. If you wanna look this up, it's graphsaboutreligion.com backslash P backslash religion has become a luxury good. I wonder why he called it that. Instead, religion has become a hospital for the healthy, an echo chamber for folks who did everything quote right, unquote, which means that it's seeming less and less inviting to those who did life another way. Uh, and this is a funny little uh, lying with data, quote unquote, thing too, because there's a pew, and this has there's a bunch of uh, studies on this, but, there, but there's a pew survey where they ask people, belief in God, 
by household income. And as the household income, this is what you would really look at if you wanted to know religiosity's connection to income. As the income goes up, uh, belief in God goes down. What's funny, though, about this is you go down to the next survey, attendance at religious services by household income, percentage of adults who attend religious services. It's kind of all the... <laughs> and that gets kind of crazy, so... People were making less than 30 grand a year. They, uh, This kind of tells you that that guy's conclude. There's probably something to that guy's conclusion that poor people like probably don't have the time or energy or money to go to church is the people who say make it 30 grand, uh, make it less than 30 grand a year. Those are the people who say they're the most religious are actually lower then people making more money than them, making up to 100 grand a year, 50 to 100, they're less likely to go to church than those people. So yeah, you're not really gonna pray and grow rich, I don't think. I think what it looks like is, it looks like, it looks like poor people don't really have the time to go to church. That is a really kind of funny lying with data thing, because you really could just ask people, hey, are you religious, do you believe in God? Yes, no, and then look at their income. And be like, oh, the people who are lower income are more likely to say they believe in God. But the church attendance thing is more material. And that requires time and money and other energy and other crap. Okay, so I think we sufficiently got that. Booty hole waxed you down. Let's check out, what's the other guy's name? Jordy. Let's check out what Jordy Peterbone is up to. Okay, this might be, I, I think we might need to print this and frame this. Because this might be the best Jordy Peterson tweet of all time. This one makes me want to get my booty hole waxed down. So Spiked, whatever the hell Spiked is, writes, The term cis is an invention of trans activists. It is being used to shut down dissent, to compel adherence to gender ideology. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so it's some weird, okay, so it's some weird account that Jordy Peterman follows. You know, he looks at it and he goes like this. <laughs> So, so Jordy Peterson quote tweets this and he writes, call me, call me sis to my face and see what happens. <laughs> if you say that to Jordy Peterman, you're going to get your booty hole waxed you down. <laughs> it's going to sound like this. Okay, guys, come on. You laugh, you know, you laugh at this, <laughs> you know, you laugh at this. Because he's a frail, 60-year-old Canadian man who cries on video all the time, okay? But I saw Jordan Peterstone at a Buffalo Wild Wings, dudes, okay? And I went up, and I go to him, I go, hey, you cisgender, bro. I went up to him in the uh, right in his face, and I said, hey, hey, dude, you cisgender, bro. And the next thing I knew, I woke up in an ambulance. So I called for backup from all my shooters, all my real shooters. And this guy, bro. He turned the place into a combination of a John Wick and John Woo film. Okay, let's check out this guy. His name's Mikey Knowles. His heart is really in this. And he got that booty hole waxed down. Bud Light, baby. Bud Light is getting absolutely wrecked still. Okay. Bud Light sales. Oh. It's not just that they dropped in the week after Transheiser Bush decided to endorse a drag queen. <laughs> Great. Or a transvestite or whatever, uh -huh. whatever Dylan Mulvaney calls himself. Amazing. It's, it's not just that they dropped and then they went back up. It's not even just that they dropped and they stayed where they were. They dropped and then they kept dropping and then they kept dropping and then oh. it looked like they kind of had, while AB InBev, Transheiser Bush might take a hit in the short run, uh -huh. there were so few major beer distributors that in the long run, it probably won't cost them all that much money. Oh. The number one beer. Yeah, that's actually true. Okay. In America now is Modelo, which is hilarious that it's a Mexican beer that's now the number one beer in, in America. Ah. And Modelo is not owned by Transheiser Bush in North America. Mm -hmm. It's owned by Constellation, which also has some woke problems too. But in the rest of the world, Modelo is owned by Transheiser Bush. Yeah, so interesting. Interesting. All this crap is owned by the same uh, companies, right? There these conglomerates own so much product right and there are so few of them anyway yeah. that they've they've just consolidated enough power that right. okay they lose one of their lines well they've got a bazillion more lines to fill it up right and almost like this thing that you've been talking about for however many months uh, kind of meaningless 
the thing we've been making a big deal about, it's kind of stupid, kind of no point. So there we go, guys, a beautiful check-in with our beautiful newsman that we like to take a look at. So guys, it's Wednesday and I'm out in Miami, ho. And I hope you guys are having a good week. I hope you're keeping that booty hole waxed down. And I will talk to you very soon. Love you and bye-bye. Oh, hey guys. Guess what? You're not even getting the whole show. If you want every episode and a whole bunch of other sh Subscribe on Patreon. Subscribe on Patreon for as little as two bones. Just click the stupid little link below the video in the comments. See, right there. There you go, click it and that, yep. <laughs> When you become a patron for as little as two bones, you get the Tuesday, Thursday, patron-only episodes. Ah! You also get the weekly book Oblega show where we talk about important books, the questions and comments th th thing where you can ask questions and make comments and all this crap. All for less than the price of a rancid Charleston chew. And for only 25 putrid little dollars, you could become a producer. That's right, support the show and get your name up here. Look at these people. Look at these, these people, it make the show possible, okay? God. I mean, without these beautiful people, this show goes straight into the dumpster. A rotten, you know, just wet, disgusting dumpster, you know, behind a restaurant. So it's, there's old milk in there. That's where this show ends up without these people. Is that what you want? Okay, I guess it's, okay. No, I guess it's what you want. I'll just leave. No, 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 it's done. It's too late. Okay? Okay? Here we go. Here's the dump truck. Here's the dump truck come to pick up the show. This is what would happen with no producers. Thank you.